How do you have another one of these ready already? Hey everyone and welcome back to another Nintendo Direct. I'm here before the Direct has started with the pre-show. Now I'm just gonna be honest, I have no idea what they could possibly have in store for us right now. I thought maybe the last one we had would be it for a while. What with all these rumors going around about a new Nintendo console allegedly being shown privately to developers at Gamescom. But basically, I can't predict this Direct. I'm dried up. I got nothing. So I guess for a Hail Mary, I'm leaning a bit towards ports and remasters for the Switch Twilight years, because I'd assume they'd have to save some big hitters for the next console at some point, right? So on with the list of predictions and bingo slots. Number one is Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pass Wave 6. Feels like such a given, but more specifically, I think either Rainbow Road or Piranha Plant Cove will be shown, either or, alongside Diddy Kong and or Pauline as the last two playable characters for the game. For number four, I'm predicting a few more random Mario things. Always a safe bet when you have no clue what's going on. I'm gonna guess a random Mario sports game, a new Mario Party game, not a DLC, a whole new game already, and Mario and Sonic at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Once again, this is probably its absolute last chance to exist. I'm not that sold on it, but I think there were some things on my bingo card from last time that are worth reusing. Now, I'm also predicting, with the grandest return ever of all time, the Mario and Luigi franchise. <sighs> I'm also going to throw out two random remasters with Super Mario Galaxy 2 at quite a steep price and fully outside of the Mario 3D All-Stars collection, because why the hell not? In addition to a Super Paper Mario remaster, this is an absolute wild card, but why not have a bit of fun? It'd be not quite exactly what people want, but a step in the right direction for the series. I figure they won't do the first two with Mario RPG coming out soon. Oh, and there's of course the Peach game. Maybe we'll see even the tiniest bit more with this game. And another return from last time, something Donkey Kong will be shown. For other remasters and ports, I'm also going to say Wind Waker HD will finally come to Switch alongside Metroid Prime 2 and 3 to be shadow dropped on the day of the Direct. Maybe that would even come alongside Metroid Prime 4. I'm thinking it's less likely, but possible. As for other Zelda stuff, I think Nintendo is lying about there being no Tears of the Kingdom DLC and are just trying to surprise us. Now for some rapid fire for all the rest of the stuff, Mother 3 will be localized, last time I'm guessing this, never putting this on here again, an F-Zero title, a new Ring Fit game or DLC, very random but hey, can't predict Nintendo, no Tomodachi life of any kind, because it's the end of a console's life, it'd start far healthier and long lasting on a new console. And look, I know it's super easy to say that something won't happen instead of saying it will. Splatoon 3 side order, Please, a look into the Sonic Frontiers The Final Horizon update coming out soon, literally any look at all, a farming simulator, something I don't care about, a new console tease, maybe even teased as the one more thing they have to say the quote. And that's it, I've randomized all the slots, printed out the bingo card, and we should be ready to watch. Cold open. <gasps> oh my god. What the hell is that? Whoa. What the hell is going on? They're not Octolings. This is so creepy. That looks like a pearl bot. <gasps> That's dead fish. What the hell? Wait, what? Oh my God, they have backstory. Listen to the music, dude. This is amazing. This is incredible. I barely know what I'm looking at. When's it coming? When is it? It looks awesome. When's that? That's, that's March through May. That's so long away. Oh, let's go. The first three Tomb Raider games, all with upgraded visuals, are venturing onto Nintendo Switch in one daring collection. That is barely a f***ing upgrade, man. He looks so derpy. There is literally no shadows in this game. Play the notes in time with the music Bro, this guy stinks. I feel like this direct is just showing old stuff. Like it's got nothing new so far. Oh, something. Okay. That's Luigi's Mansion too. I want to see if it looks any better. It kind of doesn't so far. F zero. Something new. Yeah, it is. That's cool. Returns as a ninety-nine oh. player battle royale. That's kind of fun. Thank God. Rainbow Road, please. Whoa! Uh, uh, uh. Daisy Circuit. Daisy Circuit. Wait, is there no Rainbow Road? Yes! Yes! 
<gasps> oh my god! It's Funky Kong! What? It's all three! It's all three! What the f***? What the f***? What is... What in God's name is happening? Dude, listen to this remix! I'm gonna pass it out. <laughs> oh, wow! Paper Mario 64 remake! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! It looks great too! Oh wait, no, so that's, that's Thousand Year Door! This is... This is Thousand Year Door remake! Oh my god! Holy shit! Whoa! I'm hyped. I'm so hyped for this. I will play this. I didn't expect this. I thought because of Mario RPG they wouldn't do this. This is insane. This is insane. Do you know there was a campaign for this? Like, years ago? They knew. They knew. I can't believe this is happening. We're going to get a real Mario RPG series. I'm, I'm losing it. This is nuts. I finally get to play this game. This is elite. This is a beautiful remake. This is absolutely gorgeous. I... I... This is for a new generation. This is incredible. So that direct was pretty interesting. There weren't as many new reveals as I'd hoped, but as I kind of expected, I was sort of right leaning into the remake slash remaster angle, but we'll get to that. We open with the Splatoon 3 Expansion Pass Wave 2 with Side Order. Now there's a decent bit to pick out of this trailer. From the beginning we see it's already looking more refined and detailed from last time in the bleached out in Coppola's Square, where we're immediately introduced to Pearl who is piloting a drone. I kinda doubt she's in the drone itself. For more story stuff, we have Deadfish joining the adventure, claiming she was just another bystander who got sucked in, which is fantastic, but calling herself Oct, which is 8 in German or Dutch, Speaking of, this is indeed Agent 8 as our protagonist, who seems to be trapped in some weird world with no idea what's going on. Oddly with 8, they have some weird things strapped around their arm, and even more curious is that exact spot on Deadfish's arm is bandaged up. Maybe some kind of remnant of tampering with this strange device. Deadfish is such an interesting character to bring in here. Of course, the creator of the Octo Expansion soundtrack, who became sanitized voluntarily to perfect music production and eliminate everything holding her back. I wonder if personality can still shine through sanitization. It seems like it's possible. So what a spectacular choice of a character to bring into this, especially with ties to Marina, supposedly. There could be some very interesting story and themes going on here. Now, in terms of gameplay, it seems with assistance from the Japanese website, this is taking on a roguelike approach where you try and get as far as possible, get rewards for doing so to upgrade and get better, and then attempt to get further next time. Maybe? I hope they do it well. It has the potential to be a really cool and unique concept. And we're not just fighting bloody Octarians again either. It seems like there are different level types, one involving shooting this orb thingy, one involving splat zones, and one with whatever this is. And you get these color chips from clearing each floor, which seem to have an easy, medium, and hard difficulty for each one, with more rewards for the harder you go. Now the color chips seem to organize into a palette that takes the form of a soundboard and seem to be upgradable individually. Maybe using this form of currency? And there are so many different ones with up to 36 slots available. This all looks incredible and diverts away from the secret agent storyline from the previous games. I'm especially curious about the environment, the bosses, the story with this whole thing, like where Marina is in particular. It's advertised as having an emphasis on replayability, which sounds awesome, I'm excited to try it, and it's not coming out for another six months. F At least I got a slot right. On with the show, we get Mario vs Donkey Kong from the GBA Remade. The graphics look nice, but I'm not really super into this franchise, and they'll probably release it for too much money as well. Skipping to the next thing on my radar is Princess Peach Showtime. We get the reveal here of the name, the release date of March 22nd, 2024, and power-ups slash costumes that drastically change the gameplay formula throughout a stage show. I think graphically it looks fantastic, but I might wait on reviews for this one just to see if the gameplay is enough of a challenge. Not too sure yet. Can't be too quick to jump into something brand new, but it's absolutely piqued my interest. Then there's, uh, Detective Pikachu Returns, again, and it still looks way too cheap for the highest grossing media franchise in the world, and I'm in a bit of a Pokemon frustration right now, I'm not going to get into it. I think a lot of people are feeling similar, with less than bare bones releases being rushed out, 
constantly. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. This is what got me into Luigi's Mansion. I have a lot of fondness for this game, but we basically see nothing new that we didn't already know with its prior announcement. It just looks mostly up res from 3DS to Switch now, but maybe with how freaking far away from release it is, coming in Australian winter 2024, nearly a year away, it might just get quite a few touch-ups. That series has quite a high standard set, so we'll see. Now at this point we hadn't seen a single new first party reveal yet, and although it had been nice to see some old stuff in more depth, it still has only been Side Order and the Peach game, which should have been saved as a reveal for this Direct rather than the last one. Regardless, we get some amiibo figures, nothing too crazy, but then the triumphant return of F-Zero with the old SNES game as a battle royale. I think it could be pretty fun. I'll have to give it a try, it's a cool idea. Maybe F-Zero fans are... slightly happy? Ish. Okay, but then we cut over to Ugh, League of Legends. Ugh. Ooh, okay, we got out of there alive and over to No, no, too far. Okay, now for some good stuff. The classic Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass Wave 6 DLC for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game on the Nintendo Switch family of systems. What do we have here? Uh, another Wii track. Let's hope it's just an extra one, because if Wii Daisy Circuit takes over Wii Rainbow Road, I will be livid, especially with how substandard it looks. It looks okay, but it kind of looked a bit better in Wii in some aspects. But is that a surprise at this point? I do, however, feel that it should be super easy to make a circuit track look nice, but this hotel especially looks better in the Wii one. Look, it sounds like it has a banger remix, and it is a pretty decent track layout for a circuit track. I'm definitely not unhappy to have it here. It has a lovely atmosphere and some daisy love is always appreciated. This is pretty nuts though. We now have 10 out of 16 of the original Wii Nitro tracks now in Mario Kart 8. That is nuts. Nearly a full remake. And with Rainbow Road, it better still be happening. That'd make 11. But you know what sweetens that deal a whole lot more? The entire Mario Kart Wii character roster now being playable because Diddy and Funky Kong are here. I know I predicted it would be Pauline and Diddy. I didn't think they could resist for the supposed final two character slots, but then they continued on to show Pauline and Peachette. There are now officially going to be more spots taken up by a Peach than Mario. Why are there so many Peach clones? This is insane. And I know it's Toadette with the crown, but really, it's Peach again. Why am I complaining though? Funky Kong is here! Welcome back, my Kong boys, who are wrong to be gone so long. It's a dream come true. This, everyone, is the ultimate Mario Kart character roster, and we are winning! Oh, and I guess they also announced the full remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I was so close to guessing this. I just didn't think they'd do it with Mario RPG also getting remade as well. Two legendary Mario RPGs, both simultaneously in development? What world are we in? I guess I was right last time then, I didn't have to wait that long to find out. Maybe after Super Mario RPG is out, Nintendo will realize that people like Mario RPGs. Wow though, I've heard so many good things about this game and I'm kind of looking for a new Mario RPG home after Mario and Luigi bit the dust. I am definitely picking up this title. I've heard so many great things about it and have followed the entire story so far about the horror that is the current Paper Mario series. I have played every Paper Mario game besides Thousand Year Door. It's not as accessible as the others are, so... Oh, good Paper Mario is back! RPG Paper Mario, as it always was! Mario Story is back, and it's unbelievable. Overall, to be blunt for a minute, this Direct was insanely boring in the middle for me and general audiences, I won't lie. But it was sandwiched in between Side Order, and the Mario Kart and Paper Mario double finisher. So I'm honestly a pretty happy camper for this one. Not the greatest direct, but I'd give it a B overall. As for the bingo card, I got like two better than last time with eight out of 25 and no bingos once again, but super close. Maybe if I just let Tears of the Kingdom DLC go. Sadly, it might just be true after all. Oh well, this direct was impossible to predict anyway. I'll see you guys next time. Whenever that is, let's hope for a Switch 2 in the meantime. I'm thinking the earliest it'll release is late 2024, so I'm not so sure about it. See you next time. I'm sorry, my good friends. I'll truly miss you, but I'm doing this in your honor. I'll never forget you, and maybe someday we'll be reunited again. I'll wish for your return each and every day. Never will you be forgotten from the holy Nintendo Direct bingo card. But I... I can't hold on to the past forever. I'm finally ready. 
for some Mario story again. <laughs>